on the website and emailed to interested parties. So properly warned, we can have a proper meeting here. Does anyone have any agendas, um, additions, before we start to what's already on the agenda? I've got a comment when you come to Rhodes. Rhodes, all right. <laughs> All right, so um, why don't we start with a couple quickies, like Gary. Thank you. You're back again. Stage race is going to happen again. Yes, it is. Cool. Um, I was hoping we could have two of the fields uh, come through town and do some town roads. Mm -hmm. Last year, the race was probably on about the worst weather day possible. Mm -hmm. That's 103 miles of suffering, I think, for yeah. the racers. But this part of the course, we have quite a few people drop out. But um, anyway, we'd like to come back again this year. It would be uh, September 2nd, Sunday, September 2nd. And uh, we'd come over the Bethel Mountain Road and back around and then back through town again. And, and they'd head back over to the Middlebury Gap. So that would, that would be there. Uh, route through town essentially. And two, two groups? Just two of the fields. Um, okay. It would be the, the pro men and the, the category two men. So the two sort of high level fields. And I worked with the um, constable last year as well as with the, we have the state police leading every group. Um, uh, and, and there's a whole race caravan for the, the racers that are in, uh, in the group. This will be that 18th year of the race. Um, and we had come through town last year, again, very bad weather day, but also a number of years ago in the past as well. So I'm trying to offer a couple of days. It's a four-day race, a couple of days where the, the higher level fields will get um, over 100 miles of racing each day. So that's, that's the stage here. So one um, will start down in Faston, come into town over the Bethel Mountain Road, then over the Middlebury Gap, and finish on the top of the Appalachian Gap. So that's, the, that's the course, effectively. Uh, you said it was a four-day race, but the only day it's coming to Rochester would be the second September. That's 2nd. that's correct. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes. The first day is in Warren. Um, the <coughs> second day, I'm hoping, will be over in uh, Randolph in Northfield, um, and then the last day is up in, in downtown Burlington for just a criterion. So that's the race. Um, I do have a form if if, uh, if you're amenable. I mean, I think it went well last year. I worked with uh, the local trails group, which I'm also happen to be a member of, but uh, with Rasta and, and a, a number of their members um, volunteered during the race, and the race made a contribution to develop some of the new trail in town. Yeah. Um, so that I'm hoping we'll get to do that again. That would be the plan. I didn't hear any negative feedback last year. I didn't hear much because probably everybody stayed in their house to stay out of the pouring rain that day. But, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I have no problems with it coming through. Of course, I own a bike shop, so maybe I should accuse myself. <laughs> but I'm not making any money off this race, so I think that's um, fun. Yeah, you have something to make one? I do. Yeah, it just says we can use the town roads. And yeah. Basically, with this, I'll get this um, two abreast permit from the state police. So, do you guys want to sign that? Since I do own a bike shop, we might as well avoid any, I guess, make a movement to improve. Make a move to approve this. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So what I'll do is I'll scan that and send it back. And then also I have, I don't think there's any risk or liability, but I still have insurance through USA Cycling, which is right. the governing body. And I'll send you a copy of the binder listing right. the town as, a, yeah. as an additional insured. Um, and I can't think of too much else. I, mean, I hope the Rasta crew will be interested in helping out again. They helped out in the pouring rain last year. Especially so. if it's nicer. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. Especially that would be great. Great, and I can just scan a copy and send it back if you feel like. Oops. Yeah, it's a little There you go. How many people does it take to pick up this? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Great. So you'll scan that and send yes. that back to the insurance bond. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks very much. We'll go back to paste it. <laughs> and Carol, yes. you had a little update on the EC Fiber Hub yes. construction. So we're getting ready to actually do the construction of the hub. And in our engineering and design, we uh, came to light that we'd need a little bit bigger hub than we had anticipated. Mm -hmm. And the next size hub from the one we originally showed you sits on a concrete pad. 
that's what they've marked out outside. Right, and that was right, right out here. Right outside. Yeah. That's, the, that's the area that you had approved once before, but I wanted to give you an opportunity to ask questions or comment on that um, before moving forward because our contractors are just about ready to start. Yeah, it's, uh, did you guys see the pictures of that? Why do we need a bigger hub? Uh, because Rochester, um, right now we feed uh, the, the, we come into Rochester by way of Stockbridge, mm -hmm. but as we move further north into Hancock and um, Granville, then Rochester becomes the major hub for that area. Okay. And, and where's the hub located? Right outside this window. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay. No, it looks more substantial and actually serious than the original one, just a piece of plywood on a couple posts. So I, I, I think that looks, looks better, actually. It's more durable. Yeah. So yeah. I have no problems with that. You guys? No. 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 Yeah, do you need just verbal permission, or do you need something to write? No, I, um, we have your have an um, agreement that's been signed. Yep. And it just says that we've come to agreement as to location. Yeah. Um, the, uh, so I'll just give you a brief update. The coal make ready work is still in process for attaching to the utility poles. So the utilities have been moving their, their facilities on the poles to make room for us mm -hmm. um, in Rochester as well as at Hancock and Granville. And um, that's proceeding uh, faster than last year. Um, so I'm hoping it stays on schedule. Um, and then the construction will start as soon as we get access to, to the poles. So uh, we should be ready to build it, you know, uh, later this summer would be my estimate. And that's to facilitate the expansion farther off of Route 100, is that? Well, it's for, in Rochester, it will do all of the roads that have not been done yet. So we've done 173, is that mm -hmm. number? Um, and so it'll be all of those other um, roads that are really much more rural and remote. I think that people are looking forward to it, so. They did mine today. Oh, they did your drop yes. to your house. So that, that is the other thing that is happening, is to prepare for it. We're doing... No, they, they changed the pole. They changed, oh, changed the, the, pole. the short pole to the taller pole. Exactly. <laughs> yes, so there will be a few pole replacements that we will pay for for the utilities. But in addition to that, we are doing the surveys on customers who have s signed up already. So we'll do surveys to see how we connect from, their, from the road to their house or from the pole to their house. That's being done, and they're getting the results of those surveys immediately. And then the second piece of that will be as soon as we start to do construction, they we, they may do drops from the pole to the house in in advance of having the network be ready. So you may see some of that going on too. That's really just so that we can uh, light people up quickly uh, when we can finally get the network done. So, any other questions? Thank you. You're welcome. That's a very nice dog. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right, so we'll move on to our um, final public hearing for the um, uh, park house with um, Julie and Amy. And Amy could not be here this evening. Diane Teets on this evening. Oh, then forget it. <laughs> um, so I guess we'll move to um, open that special uh, or final public hearing for the um, Park House, and do you have something you'd like to present? Um, certainly. Um, thank you all once again for your participation in this project. Um, if you didn't know already, is that um, Rochester received a $505,000 grant from Vermont Community Development Program. 501000 of that was given to Rochester Community Care Home toward our renovation, and 4000 was set aside for any administrative costs that might be incurred as a result of the grant. Um, that was added to some other money that we received from other state and federal grant sources um, for a total of $1,474,451. Um, that paid for planning um, and architecture and engineering, but what we really got out of it um, in a practical way is that we um, <clears throat> up, did upgrades to fire safety. We got a sprinkler system and a suppression system in our kitchen. And that was crucial because prior to that, we had stopped being able to take any tenants who had um, 
mental assistance vouchers. And I think it probably helps our fire department be more comfortable. <laughs> If I don't, eh. we also had a lot of um, upgrades to our 25, 26 year old elevator. And that actually also, besides functional, included a lot of safety features um, in that you can no longer get trapped in the elevator. It has a safety feature against that. Um, and it, we've seen it work. Um, we also had a lot of upgrades to our other mechanical systems. The alarm system was getting older. Um, and we had some structural reinforcement to the very old building that allowed us to do a lot of air sealing and insulation work so that we can do our part to use less um, heating resources and also save money in the future. We had um, <coughs> bathrooms added. We have um, our rooms, only two rooms remaining with a shared bathroom. All of the other rooms do have private bathrooms the new ones are considered fully ABA accessible. Um, the ones that were already existing and functional were kept as is to save costs. Um, we had many of our windows replaced. Not every single one, but most of the bedrooms now have new insulated double pane glass windows that are <coughs> operationable, that's not a word, <laughs> by our clientele. Uh, and the renovation was complete in January, the last step being the replacement of our attic windows. Um, that was a big historic preservation piece. And in fact, this renovation did comply with historic preservation standards as well as the other standards by the grant money that we received. Toward the end of the renovation, we had the great news of being assigned some project-based rental assistance vouchers which was key because those are hard to get tenant based and serving senior citizens the way we do, that can be crucial for people. That being said, does anyone have any questions or comments? Was all of this work done by one contractor? We had a general contractor who was hired under a construction management um, paradigm, mm -hmm. which was HP Cummings Construction Company. Mm -hmm. Subcontractors were, were hired by HP Cummings following the federal standards set out by HUD on how the bid process mm -hmm. could go. And are you satisfied with their work? I am satisfied with their work. Good. I mean, there were obviously bugs going through it because the building's old and has been renovated many times. There were unforeseen circumstances, but yes, I was very satisfied with the people who worked on it. Good job. Thank you. Um, there's no other public comments on that. I move that we um, close this final public hearing for this Park House renovation project. And second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we'll move on with the regular select board meeting with the um, presentation of the minutes from the last meeting. Um, June 11th, and I would move to accept those minutes as typed up. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Accept those. And let's review. Um, Joan, what you got? Um, not very much, really. Um, Good. <laughs> Not because I haven't been doing a lot. <laughs> I worked some extra days last week in order to submit the sidewalk um, application, so that went in on Thursday. And it was a very rough estimate that I was able to pull together with some help from uh, Two Rivers and uh, from uh, Du Bois and King, gave me a little bit of advice about the cost of things. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, be, I think, at least a month before we hear anything from them. And then, meanwhile, um, the stormwater master plan process is moving along. Uh, folks from the watershed uh, consulting services were here in town, I think, a couple of weeks ago doing a lot of day-long scoping sessions. Uh, they just have sent us a whole bunch of information, which I'm going to be reviewing tomorrow with Mary Ross at White River Partnership. And um, what they did is they came up with 19 possible project sites 
um, all of them with some kind of preliminary information about, you know, they scoped it out basically, why was it a, chosen as a site? It's not really chosen yet, it's proposed as a possible site, what the issues were that they discovered and what the possible solutions would be, what the drawbacks might be to doing something there, um, and photographs and various other things. And there's 19 of them. And we have to go through them all eventually with uh, the consultants and help them prioritize. I think it's uh, the contract calls for up to three projects that we might do on a short-term basis. So um, sometime, probably in the next two to three weeks, um, we'll be looking to have them come here and do a presentation and discussion um, about all of those projects and what you feel about what might be priorities and, and why. So I'll make sure you get that information packaged up in a way that um, you, know, you can get a, a good feel for what they've done so far. Um, otherwise, we're still you know, ongoing with road projects. Um, I'm helping where I can on your end uh, grant information for the end of budget year. Um, Nobody from the here from the love and the constables. Bruce, you had something you want to talk about? Yeah, at the, the last select board meeting, um, we talked about uh, the Forest Service contributing yeah. money toward uh, the, the grading of the bingo road, and I did check with Brian Austin, the engineer out of Rutland. There still is an active co-op agreement with the town. However, this year they did not allocate any money toward the grading of bingo. The money coming to Rochester uh, was supposed to be used toward the Wingbrook culvert job. Well, that's a separate co-op agreement. Yeah. Um, so it's, a, it's news to me that they're not going to do anything with bingo. Well, that's just what Brian reported yeah. to me. Okay, so. it just would have been nice if they had told us that, but I don't know if there was plans right. to do any grading right. there. Is that out. something we do on a regular yeah, kind of day, we, uh, yearly right. basis? I'm wondering if he was probably would have been confused that there's two master agreements. But well, I asked him specifically about the bingo. I'll, uh, That's a separate agreement. I'll email him. They're grading up in there now. No, not the town. National Forest has their own grader up in there. They got a contractor up in there. And he went out of there today. I don't know if he's heading up Chittenden Brook or what, but they're grading their roads. Yeah. I have something to add to roads and traffic, if I may. Um, my name's Jamin Benson. I'm the resident of the town. Uh, I live up uh, Austin Hill, 904. Um, since I moved in, love the town. Um, I'm having a problem now with the speed on Austin Hill Road. Um, there are some repeat offenders that are residents up there that are doing 50 plus miles an hour up Austin Hill Road. Um, and I've given them some friendly slowdowns and they continue to ignore it. And the biggest problem I have is the dust storm that those cars generate at those speed it's just like going through the Mojave Desert and I can't open the windows in the front of my house it'll just fill the house with dust I'm about 40 feet from the road so I was wondering if there was any kind of product a town could put on the white crushed there is dusty stuff. stuff to prevent some of this from happening and I was wondering if some signage could be put up for speed limits because there's only one on Austin Hill Road it's just past my house and it's quite old and faded and so they speed up and down it's excessive and we do put calcium chloride on the roads to control the dust and without that it would be horrible and so if it has that been done recently i don't know we can look not that it, i but, know yeah. of um, the town has been putting some newer kind of white crushed powdery stuff yeah. which is great it's nice on the vehicle and it stays yeah. um, but it creates a ton of dust when the people are inconsiderate and blow by the house at 50 plus miles an hour so and there's a lot of other people that live below me on Austin Hill and as well as Maple Hill that are experiencing the same issues 
and, you know, I know it's a dirt road, and I've lived on a few dirt roads, and they're dusty, but yeah. when people are just going by at that kind of speed, it, there's nothing really you can do about it, but, so, I was just wondering if there's something the town could do to remind people of the speed limit and try and control some of the dust. <laughs> I have a question. How many, how many people are involved, in your opinion? Um, I, I'm just the beginning of Hawk. There are at least two or three on Austin Hill um, that are complaining north of me. Um, and I know some of the people on the lower part of Austin Hill where they have to do the severe climb. Because of the vehicles are going up so fast, they're washboarding it. Um, and they're getting the dust too. Um, and Maple Hill just got done part of it. And I know those people are all keeping their windows closed. And, and we've talked. and. Um, you know, there's a lot of pedestrians and older folks walking their dogs and stuff up there, and they're reckless driving, and they're in such a hurry to get up to their homes up on the top of the mountain, they have not a lot of concern for just, the, you know, the folks they drive by, so. There's a few of us. Uh, I don't know if anybody's ever, you know, come down and, and brought it to your attention, but I thought I would, because. <laughs> yeah, that's a good step to take. Here, so. uh, yeah, yeah. Is it any particular time of the day that's worse than the other? Is it cars versus pickups? Um, it's the morning commute out and the evening commute up. Okay. Um, the UPS guy, he, he kicks up a lot of dust too. And some of the propane trucks and that, I understand that. But it's the it's mostly the people that, the residents that are just... Okay. Cars and SUVs. Cars and SUVs. And I'm not talking 10 miles over the limit, okay? I'm talking excessive. So I've tried. I tried to be nice and just say, hey, slow it down. I have a dog, you know, and I, I keep him in the yard, but, you know, anything can happen, so. So no yeah. Thank you. Thank you. No, thanks for bringing it, bringing it up and getting it on the film and getting <laughs> it in the paper and the paper. getting it in our notes. That's, that's the first step. And, uh, see if we can't um, encourage the constable maybe to spend a little time out there one of these days. Yeah. 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 During, during those hours. During those yeah. hours. I think right. that'd be a good idea. <clears throat> not in the middle of the day. Yeah. Now that school's out, and he's not um, watching stuff at the at school. <clears throat> that help. Thank you, James. Appreciate yeah. it. Thanks. How long have you lived, lived up there? I moved in in just February. February. Yeah. So, it's welcome. Yeah. Work on it. yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a house project. I'm yeah, sure. well, we're here twice a month. You're um, welcome to come. Great, thanks. And um, here what's going on in town. <clears throat> so, project is moving forward. Yeah, they didn't work today. I thought they were going to... Oh, it's too nice today. <laughs> <laughs> well, the last week, they wanted me to make sure I was going to be around because they were going to start cutting the holes in the top. Mm -hmm. Now, one, the tanks are all backfilled. Tanks are in the backfilled on the new field. And he was talking because they don't work next week. Right? Yeah. The 4th of July week, they aren't working. So you want to get this all the steel in and and the hatches all in down here this week. They still could. I mean, it's not too great by any means, but maybe they want to. They it. didn't work down below today either, which I could understand because they're at the point now where they're going to start doing the field I think. Yeah. Because uh, they can't really do much of the piping until the field's in. So I'm assuming he's waiting to start on the field after the fourth, and then he could give it. it. You know, they've done pretty well. They've had, they blocked it off really well at night and stuff so that people can't get in there. And, I mean, he's done the extra effort. Yeah, and it's pretty good. The day they were setting the tanks, I was there because we had to back a couple of trucks out there on their property, and I went, told them I'm sorry, it was more than one truck, and said that we were going to, when we got done, we'd, Reseed it and hay it and have it looking top notch. Yeah. And then we met with uh, GMP down there. There, we thought maybe they might set the pole to the north outside the field, mm -hmm. figuring that way they could get a truck in there to 
do their camp pots and stuff. But because they're going to replace the pole, it's slated to replace that pole that's inside the field now. And instead of replacing it there, I said, well, maybe you could replace it there, but it's going to be too long a span. And she's going to cook us $3,200 for the pole. So I said, I'd well set it back down there because it makes a shorter run for the contractor. So they're going to set it outside the fence on the lower end, which is better for her. Then we don't have to dig that old field up. Yeah. I'd like to think that we could keep the old field intact and, and use it in the summertime for another 15 years or 20, you know? Because if you give it that break for three or four months, that really helps the other ones. Yeah, it's still functional. As long as it doesn't, you know, yeah. we check modern tubes, you know, weekly and if there's nothing of course, this year everything's so dry. Yes. I, you know, this year you could let it go for a long time. Other than that, I had a leak in the marshes that we fixed, a water leak, and then had the sewer manhole over here in front of the bean house. We been sort of written up on it because it's got loose bricks, but we haven't done anything because it's in the middle of blacktop. And then Meyer called me up and said that they're going to add to that blacktop, so we fixed it. It's time to do it, yeah. You know, so it doesn't cost the town much because they're going to do the blacktop and just, you know, we dug it up and put a, you know, we're using cement collars now instead of brick for risers. Yeah. So, I've got two or three others, so whenever blacktop happens, I mean, like last year's over from the park, yeah, we did that one. <coughs> wherever, wherever the brick are, I tried. How big of a riser is it? That one there has got a foot one. Foot. But there was four courses of brick that we took out, so that's two and a half inches to course, so about the same. Other than that, I guess. We're all set. Right. Terry, did you get a chance to repair those two tires on the jet set? And the, no. they're both flat. Yeah, I know. I'll get them. I'll take my air compressor down. Town didn't have an air tank. I thought they had one. I caught up Dana today, and he said, no, they didn't have one. So I'll just bring my little compressor down, fill them up. That's all I need. It's just there. They're not. Yeah. Probably. They aren't flat. They're flat, flat, but they aren't completely flat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they got a little bit of air still in. Sure. Yeah. Down. <laughs> they need the air bad before they move. They must be leaking. I don't think so. Why would I be flat? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe a little bit. If they are, I'll just take them off the mines and get it fixed. Okay. I'll keep track of it. I'll just leave my compressor down there. For a couple days, and I'll check them. Let's say I'll just take them down. Let me. Yeah. All right. So uh, moving on to other stuff. Your We've stuff. Got, yeah. It's your management letter for management the letter auditors for the auditors. Okay. It's the yeah. same thing we do every year, yep, every and they year. put the fancy wording into. Yeah. So basically, um, I would uh, move to engage Pace and Holly one more time to do the uh, one more time. the audits. <laughs> okay. Um, Here's the audit of the books. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Excuse me, Jim. Can you Pace and Holly? Pace and H A W L E Y L L C. It's an auditing uh, firm. Auditing firm. Yeah. Thank you. for the um, putting out the roadside mowing to bid which is asking for one side mount 
mower at a six foot minimum and one over the rail mower with a five foot minimum and contractor must have spare mower and tractor so they can keep working and contractor must have proper signage and liability insurance and workers comp insurance preferred no ditch mowers or sickle bar mowers what's a ditch mower ditch. i don't know this just this is a recycled older. Go to the whole town. Um, it doesn't no. specify. <laughs> That's one of the things we, we we need to specify is yeah. what is getting mold. No, we can't do and the whole when, town. So what is getting mold? Just out there, yeah. yeah, that's probably every fall, right? Yeah. But we we don't know, so we, we don't have documented what exactly is being mold. No, not yet. This is just the. Uh, uh, the only reason I, I say that is because I know it's difficult for people to quote on this if they don't know what they're going to mold. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah. Um, so, can you do it by the mile? Or what? How far back are you going to do it? Are you going to make three, four passes? Or I mean, that's why it's not all. for discussion. Yeah. That's why we're not going to talk about it. Right. Right. How about as far back as you can reach? I should. <laughs> Is there any way we could schedule mowing so that like we could whack turbo before it goes to seed? You know, that would be like starting it probably two weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be nice. You know, at least maybe we could at least hold it to where it's at, you know? Yeah. I don't think we mowed it all last year. And I know. We, That's, we cut it. money there yeah. because yeah. we needed it someplace money. else or something. But and Generally, we mow later on in the year, even though it's not right. optimal for gerbil, but it's, it's, right. you know, so we don't have to. Well, mow I'm just thinking, fall. you know, we could kill two birds with one stone. I personally, you know, would pay more to get it done twice. You know, once when it comes in the seed like two weeks ago and once again you know when it, if it comes back you know a month later or well, maybe the town could look into like getting a, a machine that'll do it well that's what i was just gonna say that you know comes around to that i mean all you need is a, a, a brush hog with an iron arm the loader would do that you know the loader you guys own now could do that the chervil's at least waist high on this amount. Yeah, but if we can hit it when it's, you know, lower, no, I know, I mean, it's, it's, it's huge. It's got here, it just needs to just get a, spend the money on the boat. You mean the mowing or the mower? The mower, the lower can do it. Yeah, they make a mower that will hook to the front of that lower. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't a flail mower be a better solution for the pros rather than a brush hog type? Uh, well, you got this, not before you get the rocks and stuff, but. Yeah. Well, a flail mower's one pretty good at it. Yeah. Rocky. I mean, yeah, I'd over the rail and stuff, but they're pretty forgiving. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, you can hit a lot of things in the grass. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, but, but they do make them. You know, they go on the front of any quick attached tractor. Jesus, the loader could could do it. This is what we like. And we probably end up mowing more if we had. Yeah, I know. <laughs> than spending the money to go out to bid and, and deal with that. Well, no more that cheap. I mean, they're all no, no, they're not. But, you know, but. Well, what roundabout figure, what's it, you know, on a normal year, what's the town spend on, you know, when they mow? When we mow, we're like When you mow the whole town. It's almost 9,000 last year. Yeah. There was one year Six thousand, that was like incredibly low. Right, that was like I just yeah, he kind of just like big C enterprise. He goes, I, I got two kids, I'm a single dad, I, I got a mow. <laughs> so he did, and he was good, but he's more. Um, it cost you probably forty. He's married now. Forty, forty, probably. Forty thousand. Oh really? Oh yeah. So payback would be what? Take a few years. At least. He still got the FD file. Right. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of maintenance, so. Oh, with the rail ones. Yeah, yeah. And, and there's the hourly wage for whoever's running it. Right, right. But the hourly wage on the road crew is probably going to be a lot less than the right. contract it out. Right. Yeah, right, right. I mean, you can spend a day right. here and there doing it as opposed to making a big project of it. It utilizes the loader to a little better. Yeah. Do we have that? Um, 
attachment you talked about? No, we don't. Uh, but no, that, we have the loader, but not the attachment. But, no, I, I, yeah, that's what I meant. Too. I know we have the loader. No, but you need a, a caterpillar attachment that goes to a, a, a skid steer attachment, which then you have to buy the mower. So you have to buy two pieces. Yeah. So it's done. Well, I don't, I don't it's definitely, um, we didn't budget for it um, this next year coming up, but it's, um, there's yeah, definitely something, it's not, it's not the first time this come up, and it's, um, as well as that, we probably could use a, a little rubber treaded excavator, and we could do a yeah, lot. Yeah, you know, if you had, yeah. Yeah, the problem with excavator, now you got a trailer, yeah. and then you need a class A. Well, driver's license. No, that's when our, our advertisement for I see that. It says that Class A is like, whoa, yeah. you guys stepping it up a little. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> nobody else has got one. So this, we brought this up just to start the discussion, not like we're putting this ad in the paper next week. This is to, um, we this also. Is like a format for an ad? Say what? This is like, this is like a self spawn in. No, this no. is not yeah, something that's going in. This is to open up the, the discussion about exactly. There are also people that have, in years past, that have requested us to not mow there. Their, so we don't need to just say they're going to mow the whole town if right. there's people that don't feel like they want it and, or need it. You know, I think on Jerusalem. Oh, there, yeah. There that option's there. always there. Just yeah. flag your stuff. Yeah. You know, yeah. So. Do you remember what we put in the budget for mowing next year? No. Starting next week, we'll have to look that up. That That's the, going to determine how much we can mow. Is basically, we did put money in for the for mowing this coming year that starts in a couple of weeks. Okay. Yeah. So Thanks. you won't be putting the, the mowing out today until after the new um, fiscal year starts? Right. This, yeah, this would be in the new fiscal year that yeah, we're just um, starting the conversation because we can't, mow, like we, we, can't, we can't mow the whole yeah. town and, and in the past we've tried to you know attack the hot spots and, and you know rotate around town where we can mow but it's um, well corners blind driveways exactly that kind of stuff yeah you know, first and then what's left is left I guess yeah. it'd be nice to you know public land that Nobody really gives a shit about where they let the turtle grow wild. Whack and that, you know. Yeah, it's um I don't know how what spiral we're gonna get. It's too late for the sure. Yeah. Few yeah. Feedback. No, this is this is like for like next year probably. You fun. know, it takes a little advanced planning, not a lot, you know, but I hate it when they throw it into the tar road, someone throw a motorcycle away. Well you yeah. know it could be death. <laughs> we got to start doing something with the shit or it's going to be everywhere, you know? Yeah, I know people like, that spend hours, hours a week pulling it. Yeah. Yeah. Pulling I've done it for pulling three, three years at my place and I can finally see it does work. Really? Yeah. You know, it does. Yeah. You just got to keep at it, you know? Yeah. I've done it all the day now. Uh, yeah. My home work. Yeah. Down for three days. <laughs> it's probably greater though. Thank you much. <laughs> yeah. So let's, I think we need to um, work on that. We need to figure out what we have in the budget for it and then get some ideas about what it's going to cost. And, and, then and look at some from the years past. Exactly. So yeah. Give us some parameters going yeah. forward. Yeah. But we're um, not going not gonna to come up with anything tonight on that. But. No, but if we're, if we're trying to schedule it for late August, September. We we'll need to start. we got to talk about it now. Month, month. Yeah. Yeah. Good thing to get around, you know, about the mountain road, it wouldn't hurt any if they could cut a little bit of that brush so you could see down. When you pull up that intersection to go pull it down to the village, yeah. you can't see. It's getting harder and harder, you're right. You're out in the middle of the road before, if the car's coming up through and they don't turn, Mm -hmm. They're yep. testing their brakes. Yep. Yep. You cannot yep. see past that sign. But for those of us that go straight a lot, because that's where we live, right? You really got to slow down because you can't see that somebody's going to miss that. And <laughs> if you stop it, if you stop where that 
stop sign is right. and where the line is, and you leave from there, there's no way you can see. No way. I go over and back every day, and tonight when I was coming home, I really saw that I had to edge out and edge out, and just as I edged out and thought I was fine, somebody came going up, and they weren't turning. So, so yeah, we just need to collect out those spots. Any other spots come to somebody's mind? I see you almost lost your new guardrails, too. Uh, they were those mess about, but you see that? No, I didn't. Black marks go right up. They go right down the side. Yeah. He must have rubbed on them. They did. <laughs> you I see think it. it's a trailer. Yeah, a trailer. big, big, big semi must have come down through there. Today, this morning, or sometime, it wasn't there this one morning. Day, one there early this morning. So, so, so I don't know, but you know, 50 feet of black mark probably. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they go around, I said, oh, there goes the guardrail. I said, they, they, they look to be all right. <laughs> Maybe, you know, maybe, Martha, if you mention this and just say if anyone has trouble areas that they know of, they can let us know yeah. so we can put them on a list and, and uh, or, or as well if anyone has areas that they don't want done to mark it off so that they don't so get them. So you're looking for input? Yes. I'm sure I'm going to get it. <laughs> We're going to get it. Okay. Okay. One night they got a new home. 4,300. Probably. Yeah. That's going to be yeah. three, four times a year. Yeah. Right? yeah. Good. And then we've got an agreement between Able Waste Management and from Plymouth in the town of Rochester. And the town agrees to allow Bail to operate the Saturday Fast Trash program from <coughs> July 1st through June 30th next year. And the hours are between our first and third Saturday of the month from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m and they, um, they're asking for the town to continue to be operated here at the town clerk's parking lot. And they will also provide all employees and equipment necessary to receive recyclables and trash. And there's gonna be a cost of $3 for 13 gallon bag, not to exceed 15 pounds of trash, or $6 for a 33 gallon bag, not to exceed 30 pounds of trash. I've never seen him with a scale out there. <laughs> no. But they think they're probably used to it. <laughs> but if it does exceed, exceed that, they, um, they uh, have the right to charge the customer 10 cents per pound for the additional weight. Uh, they agreed to provide compost bags at a cost of $4 for 13, 13 gallon compost bag of food residuals and yard debris, or six dollars for 33 gallon compost bag of food residuals and yard debris. Provide compost bags or accept compost bags? I'm not sure. But so, I don't know if they have the right one. I think maybe accept it, but we can check on that. Uh, oh, it says specific bags for compost are available only through. Able at any able fast trash program or in the office. So I guess they have uh, specific bags for compostable stuff. And able employees will collect all the fees for trash to cover the cost of landfill disposal as well as defray the costs of the entire program in cash directly from the customers. The town of Rochester agrees to pay 12. Hundred dollars per month for all acceptable recyclable project products delivered to the fast trash program. This fee allows all participants in Rochester to utilize the single stream recycling program free of charge. So the charging is at the at the drop off is only for trash or food, not for recycling. And was that what were we what we paying last year? Twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. So they haven't raised it. They're just continuing that some unusual in this day and age. But, um, oh, are they doing a sufficient job? Oh, oh they're, so. they're very yeah. pleasant yeah. and yeah. I love the fact that I only make a whole bag of trash in one month and for three bucks I can just bring it here 
and I bring them my recycling too. And Are they're very pleasant. Are they adequate? If you're not finding someone that showed up too late and just left their stuff in front of you? No. no. Okay. Good. Well, they're three okay. hours twice a month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And everybody's uh, getting the hang of it. Okay. And it is yet yeah, another social event in town. <laughs> it is, yeah. Do you guys remember, I think I sent you off an email about um, a woman in Hancock who comes down. Yes. And, yes. and I said, you know, this is, this is free for Rochester residents. She goes, I, I own an inn. <laughs> I don't care. I, you know, I, if you guys don't care, I don't care. But, wow. you know, it's they do recycling up in Hancock as well and, and, uh, in Granville. And, you know, I've taken my trash up there and paid for it, but I'm gonna take my recycling to where their citizens are paying for it. But six mm -hmm. one after the other. other. It's just some cases of this. Are there other known cases of it? You know, that's what I know of. I mean people drive in with New York plates and stuff that they could be yeah, yeah. Uh, second homeowners. I, I think if it gets to the point where they need a second truck or they, they can't handle the volume, then, then, then we need to crack down on that a little bit. Because they, they don't can, know either. No, no, they don't know. It's, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if we need to make a big stink of it. Don't need to encourage it. Right. Um, but I think we'd be able to, to agree to this. Yes. Move, so. To continue the service. All in favor? Um, I think we, we budgeted yeah. for it last mm -hmm. year. So. Isn't there an article in the paper on those alternate ways that recycling continues or regards? I know there is for Rochester. Do you know if they do that for Hancock or Granville? Um, I put it in myself for Rochester, but no one from Hancock or Granville has notified me. I could certainly ask them. But I mean in the article specifically for Rochester residents, not just oh. recycling in Rochester. I think that's what I said. I don't said, know how it I reads because I don't read it. I think I said <laughs> Rochester residents. But I'll check. Yeah, if you would mind. Like I said, I know it's there, but I don't read it. Oh, oh thanks. <laughs> well, I know it's us. <laughs> I know I just need <laughs> So, in um, part of generating that recycling, we've got a, a liquor license application from the, the Purcell version. Huntington House people. Oh, the, the new owners of the Huntington House. Is that that is hasn't happened? gone through yet. It hasn't gone through yet, but they're doing yeah. the paperwork. So. Yeah, I believe it's August. 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 Yeah. So I'd um, mm -hmm. I'd move to welcome them to town by approving their So there'll be two permits at the same time for a month? Um, I don't think this would go into. Yeah. Um, into play until they, they take over some fairly right. ones. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Huntington House is good until October. Right. So if, right. if theirs would stay in place until this closes. And when, when is it closing? And when so will Scott yeah. Robbins. You're saying mm -hmm. August? Mm -hmm. August. Yeah. Okay. So it's not like they'll be too, <laughs> too, you know, I'm fine with it. Uh, they just want to get all their um, paperwork done. So. Uh, so I'd move to approve that. Do they have to have a liquor license with the state in order to get into the town, or is it vice versa? This is, this is, this, they <coughs> go through the town and the application then it goes to okay. the state. But the town, the state will not give them one if, if the, the town does not approve it. So, so that's what we're doing. Yeah. yeah. And the state does their own little background checks and all that. Properly. Yeah, they do. Yeah. So. Move to approve that. Second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And what were the names again? Roger Purcell. And uh, I don't know if they're going to keep Regina it. Regina and Vincent, I think it is. I don't know what they're going to do. Vincent call. Purcell. Purcell Corporation. Mm -hmm. And still calling it the Huntington House Inn. Do you know where they're from? New York somewhere. New York? Everybody that works there has met them a few times. Yeah, he's, he's the chef. He's the chef. Yeah. She's the innkeeper. Yeah. Not much is going to change that we know of. Yeah. And you're saying August.
contract for garden work at the library um, for Marnie Weichel, who has been doing that for um, for several years. And she's got the um, yeah. so I move to execute that. Second. Yeah. In favor? Aye. stepping out to get the uh, a solid number about how much we're looking to borrow from a grant anticipation note, which is basically money to pay some bills until we um, the money comes back from the grant, which usually they want to see work completed before we get the grant money. So this is just a, the Mass Coma Bank is offered uh, no fees and a 2.65% municipal rate, which is Pretty, uh, pretty fair in the one year term. And she'll be back with how much this is for um, big, the biggie is the, the septic project. Right. So the yep. wing, wing, wing farm, farm project. project. The biggest one. Yep. And what's it called again? It's a the, um, the wastewater project. No, no, I mean the, the thing that you're going to apply for. The oh, grant. it's a uh, um, grant anticipation. anticipation. So, thank you. Yeah. Three ninety six eight hundred. Three hundred thousand. Three hundred ninety six thousand eight hundred dollars. Yeah. The town line project is about ninety five percent done. It'll be done tomorrow. Yeah. Roads open. Yeah. Okay. I see the roads open. So you got there's a bunch of um, piles. Piles yep. to the piles to go tomorrow. Yep. And there was a couple spots where I rode, drove up there with Dana today, and there was. Um, some of the berm removal or it was pushed off into the woods, not um, pulled out. And I could see where that makes sense in some spots, but there was definitely a few spots where it, it still is higher than the, than the road bed. And it, I, I don't know if it's gonna totally shed water. So maybe when you're picking up your piles, you could um, just eyeball the. I know. Are you going to be up there doing the pickups? I know you had other yeah, guys no, up there I'll doing the work. Up. Yeah. No, they're they're going on moving, moving on other things. I'm right. Doing. So if you're doing the final pickup, maybe yeah. you can do the final quality okay. control. Yep. Yeah. A couple of the spots and just see if it. And yeah. then the ditch down by Harold Hubbard's. That um, you still have a little bit more ditching to connect those two culverts. <coughs> Um, yeah, some of that got kind of, Dana kind of said we really don't need to do too much other than the edging, like you said. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, the ditch going up is pretty deep already. Right. Maybe just pull some of the yeah. vegetation off the top, but the, right. at the very bottom, yeah. where that culvert, yeah. those two that's connect. going to happen tomorrow. Yeah, okay, that's what I figured. So. Yeah. yeah. Great, thanks for um, jumping yeah. on that. Yeah. And I'll, uh, I didn't really say, but I guess I assume I'm going to take care of the old culverts, is that correct? That would be great. Yeah. Good. Where do you just? Uh, I'll have to bring him Lance. It wasn't defined. In yeah. The, it wasn't. It defined. wasn't. It probably should be. I mean, it's got kind yeah. of a three hundred dollar item, but yeah. But uh, no big deal. I've uh, taken care of it. But it's, it's a you know I'll bring it to the landfill. Yeah. One load probably. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, they're fairly torn up. Not useful for much. No. <coughs> no. You'd have to. It it'd take a long. It take a lot longer to save the culvert. Yeah. And if the culvert's not worth saving, it's not. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you for, for that. So in terms of this, I guess I'd, I'd make the move that um, we do um, go into this grant anticipation note with Mass Goma. See, the thing is there's so much money that has to be paid out. Yeah. Yeah. The process is that it will come back, but yeah. we can't pay it out without yeah. that. Right. So. It's just yeah. bridging over until we've been there. Yeah. I don't like it's to do just, it. There's, there's no, is this anticipated to be out there? Um, this, this loan would, uh, is they'll only for, for a year. they'll keep it for a year, yeah. but there's no fees, there's no early right. payment things, so it's really the key we'll of what happened we'll use, so. um, mm -hmm. much sooner than that. It, we would run it out for a year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, um, it would be nice if
nice if we were just to have plenty of cash to mow everything and just pay all the bills <laughs> <laughs> ahead, but um, it'll, uh, it'll happen thanks to the grants. So that's oh, right. my world. Yeah. Yeah. So I would uh, move we um, move forward with this. Nope. Second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 So we can have it within. Yeah, it'd be great. This is just a funny little thing that came in the mail. There's a class action lawsuit that has been put forward by some towns somewhere else, not, not in, I don't think in Vermont, um, for towns that did not receive enough payment in lieu of tax money. Mm -hmm. And they think that Rochester is one of them. So they said if you want to sign on in this, you might get more built money, but it's not going to cost you anything to do it. But I figured I wanted you guys to just see it improve before I sign, send, send it off and say, sure. Really, you won't. They're not taking away what we already got. <coughs> Did you have this one? No, I haven't read it. I anybody. haven't either. Yeah, so I guess. Well, I don't I'm have to do it right away. So yeah, yeah, you yeah, can yeah, scan it to you if you want. Yeah, it would be, yeah I'd rather it. read it than um, see exactly what this from um, Utah. King County, Utah versus United States. <laughs> so I guess it's we'll read it. We'll read it over. Um an old business. We had um what Harlan, you'd made a request wondering how much the, the yeah. legal fees have yeah. added up. Yeah, to I the, want to um, get that in the minutes. The, okay. Do you as of Today, the town has spent $19,205.61 on legal fees to keep that road open. On the Well, just to find gap. Yeah. So, on Bingo Road? Yeah, it's going to find gap only. That's two years of roadside mowing that we haven't had money for for the last yeah. two years. Yeah, it's um, with yeah, a uh, couple grand and a half to pull. Right. Yeah, it's a shame it's, it's come to this. Yeah. Well, you know, but um, the road yeah. goes nowhere. What? Not totally nowhere. But it'll uh, go somewhere. Much. There was a lot of people said that about the bridge being rebuilt up there. So Mason came well, to his house said it was a bridge that went to nowhere for a couple hundred thousand dollars. So well, you know the story on that. Why don't we get that straight? The reason that bridge is so big is because the town at the time didn't want to spend money on a bridge. The cheapest way out was to go with FEMA money. And that's why the bridge is so big. It was built to FEMA specs. I would have much rather seen a bridge equivalent to what was there that would take a log truck. They, um, they, it's, it's all about the design. Well, I mean, I what's done is done. What's done is done. It's done, right. And making this, this bridge sound like it has to go somewhere, the only reason we got the bridge in the first place is because nobody wanted to spend the money to replace what was there. This was the cheapest way to do it. Well, if nobody wanted to spend the money to replace what was there, it wouldn't have been built. It's um, exactly. kind of a circular argument there. Exactly. But anyway, the point is, when you just said a, a road that goes nowhere. No, you would have had to build a bridge. It does go somewhere. Yeah, it does go somewhere. You have anyway. to build a bridge. Yep. You would have had to replace that somehow. They cho you chose to go with FEMA Mike. So consequently, we ended up with a four-lane bridge because it had to be built to their specs. I don't think two cars could pass it. <laughs> well, yeah. it's yeah. a little yeah. overbuilt yeah. from what was there. What do you say? Well, it's, it's it, was, built, it was built yeah. to withstand right. uh, the, the squad. Yeah. It didn't go out in Irene. Yeah, but it wasn't no. built to hook up to a throughway or anything. You know, It was built to... Uh, anyway, that's there. not the point right now. The point was... Yeah. Tom didn't want to spend the money. They got FEMA money, and they got that um, bridge. Why spend the money if you get it for free? Yeah, I mean, that's exactly. the FEMA. I get it. I get it, here. I get it. But everybody makes a point on how huge this bridge is. That's why. Okay. Okay? We got that straight now? 
You got that, sir. Okay. You got that, sir. Okay. Um, if there's um, nothing else on the agenda, we're going to pay bills and go into executive session to talk about employee issues. So. Thank you. Don't. They have it. They have it. Oh. I have it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's fine. Thank you.